Welcome to Pain and Performance, a how-to guide of training with and through pain. It is our goal to empower those whose training and performance have been interrupted by pain with the necessary knowledge to have more successes with these experiences. After working with athletes for nearly 30 years, we feel like we can provide a practical scaffolding for others to use to mitigate painful interruptions to training and athletic seasons. Pain and Performance uses a biopsychosocial approach to managing pain and or injury. This is a fluid approach to managing pain. Most traditional approaches place the cause of pain on the state of tissues, but scientific literature does not support the simplistic version of the function of pain. Pain is defined by the International Association of the Study of Pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage. There are many mediating factors that contribute to painful experiences. A biopsychosocial approach of care appreciates the complexity of pain while using this complexity to its advantage. The complex nature of pain does not mean that your training strategies with and through pain need to be complex. If anything, it should simplify the process. When I say your process, it is not incidental. Your program should be designed for you and not your condition. When designing your training program, you should keep these things in mind. Your health is more important than the absence of pain, and pain does not reflect your health. Also keep in mind what's important to you. If you are a runner, then during this process, it is important to try to keep running while working with your pain. This may mean run walking for a time or some other titrated version of this. This goes for other sports as well. Removing meaningful activities and relationships associated with these activities can play a significant role in your pain experience. These are the main tools for designing a training program or a therapy program. When choosing exercises for your training program, try to keep it around three exercises. Using those exercises one to two times a day, a little flexibility in the schedule is okay. In the beginning, choose exercises that feel safe, providing a good locus of control. Often, we start with isometric exercises or very slow repetitions. For instance, if you have calf pain or Achilles pain, start with slow calf raises, taking several seconds to achieve a single repetition. Choose at least one exercise that loads the painful area. Remember that some pain is okay. If after 24 hours it has returned to baseline, all is well. If it hasn't, don't panic. This doesn't mean that you've damaged anything. It just means that you may have done a little too much. So adjust either the amount of time you perform the exercise or the intensity, but stay consistent. We usually suggest doing your exercises for somewhere around two to three minutes, starting and stopping as needed. The reason for this is that people tend to daydream and forget how many repetitions they've done. If the exercise is difficult enough, then you will probably need to stop around four to five times on the way to three minutes, equaling around four to five sets. Your exercise progression should include load, duration, intensity, and something of a ballistic nature. Load and duration are the primary tools to use during your exercise selection to start. Once things begin to start feeling better, you can begin to use exercises that are a little more ballistic in nature, such as jumping, throwing, etc. Consistency is very important. This may be one of the primary reasons to work with somebody, accountability. However, using a spreadsheet or a journal could suffice also. This may take some time. Try to be patient. It's best to change your three exercises up every seven to 10 days. Good exercises are like good food. They have expiration dates. Remember that during this process, you will have some bad days and flare-ups. That's okay. You are the constant in this complex equation. It's okay to experience some disappointment along the way. You should also not hesitate to experiment a little bit with your exercises as long as it's not erratic. Here are some other things to keep in mind that we know can influence a painful experience. Poor sleep, rumination or worry, beliefs, depression, expectations, and anxiety. If you were to work with somebody, for this process, they would only be using your gifts of changeability. Remember, you naturally have everything you need to start feeling better. See you soon.